Hi, this is Shadi and today we're going to be looking at the self-defense techniques of catch wrestling. This is a jujitsu inspired theme which is by the admission of the catch wrestlers themselves. They took the idea of compiling these techniques from jujitsu self-defense. So the book that we're going to be looking at is Wrestling and Physical Culture by the great Farmer Burns and he references jujitsu uh, when it comes to self-defense. And he says there's not many techniques that are different uh, between jiu-jitsu and wrestling. And I tend to disagree. Just the gokyo alone, throwing-wise, it is heavily richer than catch wrestling. I compared the catch wrestling throws in the past. And they're nowhere near as the throws of the gokyo. Also, when it comes to self-defense and also ground techniques, there are some separations. Um, judo is different when it comes to strangles and also kensetsu waza and even um, the grappling techniques but um, he's saying that he fought the Japanese and he beat them a good wrestler can beat any jujitsu uh, jiu wrestler as he says um, of course the book will be linked in the description below for your education and entertainment so the first is your classical you know chokehold um, with both hands clasping the neck so his solution for this is simply uh, exploring the weak link of the hand that is strangling which is the distance between the thumb and the finger so what he does is reap or cut out upward and outward at the same time and that will loosen the grip uh, easily so uh, exploring the weak link of the choke the next one is the side headlock uh, you might see all these kuinage or scooping throws that I've uh, shown in the past, but here it is far more uh, working on, you know, making someone let you go. And here you can rotate, locking the shoulder. What interests me is notice his right hand, how it is uh, pushing on the knee, and that will prevent uh, the aggressor to turn towards you and thus giving you the time and the capability to rotate and actually lock the shoulder and escape the headlock. So you're rotating towards the back, uh, locking the elbow. You can end up um, taking the back entirely. Now here for more serious things is against the pistol. So Farmer Burns surprised by a holdup man. Um, I, I would imagine this would happen far more in his days than today. Uh, here you can see he grabs the wrist and turns the barrel towards him now I wish he was a little bit more to the side because you want to avoid the line of fire and then execute your technique by pushing on the wrist as you grip it and then from there you turn the barrel but if you stay in the line of fire like as you see here with the feet placement it can be quite dangerous but nonetheless the wrist technique it is found in Maeda as uh, old jujitsu and all other uh, jiu jitsu self defense books. I will link the Maeda video of self defense at the end and as a pinned comment. So, um, this is a very classical thing. As he says, that he's going to use the old wrestling techniques to do the same applications of self defense scenarios um, in wrestling because he, as he believes, there's not much difference or not much richer. He did talk about the palm strikes that they have, but other than that, they he says that everything else, the heavily trained wrestler he develops a strong body so not just the palm of the hand so here he disarms and then this is really cool he says that you turn the wrist towards them which which causes them to bend to the side and then kick the leg that is below the wrist or on the same side as the wrist and then they will easily fall which is true because as if you've been wrist locked like if you did aikido or any type of uh, self-defense uh, techniques you would know that this kotegeishi uh, will actually make you tilt because you want to avoid the wrist pain and from there taking the leg from underneath you is easy and from there he points the gun at him keeping control of the wrist and stepping on him for um, complete control i love that he follows it to the ground of course he's a wrestler so he must know that he should follow it into the ground fully this is your kotegeishi demonstrated here um, it's a very dangerous technique in the sense that if you don't know how to do ukemi, as you see here, that wrist is gone. Hence, tensetsu waza in the standing in judo is prohibited. So this here, he is talking from experience. Um, Farmer Burns subduing an insane man armed with a straight razor. So 
Um, he was talking about a man who terrorized the community with a straight razor. I know this, the razors are easy, easy, either the double edge or this one, the straight razor are a very easily concealable weapon on the streets and very uh, widely used. Um, I know when I was growing up, people talked about concealing razors all the time. So here he says that you have to divert his attention and then from there you continue to um, control the sleeve, hence controlling the wrist. So um, here you can see the man holding the razor is looking towards us while Burns is in front of him. So he diverts his attention and this is uh, um, based on his experience. So he diverged his attention and then from there he uh, proceeded to disarm him. So here he grabs the sleeve. Notice he says the thumb should be in. So this is like your classical sleeve hold when you're playing guard. It's the same. Um, in the stand up, we don't do that because uh, the thumb can easily snap. Any finger inside uh, in the stand up is very dangerous. But here um, he pushes against the razor and to, to keep the dangerous arm at bay. Uh, notice his stance. It's like your um, jigotai. You have one arm, one in the front, one in the back, very jujitsu like. And then from there, he proceeds to disarm him, taking the razor from him. Now the razor is in the hand of Farmer Burns, and he is um, trying to control him and subdue him. So here, the man is only held by his sleeve, and then he goes for a two on one. So either you throw the razor away or you put it in your pocket. You continue the hold on the sleeve. And then you take an under hook, uh, basically a Russian tie or what we call a 2 one one um, The jujitsu restraining techniques, the wrist locks from the restraining techniques such as this, they all uh, require you to hold like a 2 one one uh, grip so you can keep them at bay and also preventing them from turning towards you and controlling the arm and subduing them. And finally, it's the attack from the rear. You see it in all sorts of self-defense kata. Um, Sergio Bizenio and um, uh, Nage no Kata and here you see the flying mare as they call it the Ippon Seonage or Morote Seonage um, it is also found in Irish collar and sleeve um, it is referenced in this book in prior chapters um, so any of Seonage is considered a flying mare here you see in the Irish collar and elbow uh, video that I've done a while back um, you can see uh, it's being done as a morote serenage because you, can, you are not allowed to let go of the grips So the only serenage you can do is morote serenage or serenage in the gokyo terminology or kodokan Terminology you can see it on the left hand side. It is incredibly destructive now here when it comes to applying it You have to clasp the hand that is holding you from the back uh, It's not just creating like a fist as you do in competition today and then here, they're not going to go anywhere and you just cut down with your hand. There's a reason why it's a tewaza. It's not a hip throw. You really lock them on 